a couple of disclaimers. Um, so yes, thank you for making that trigger warning known. I think that since I like added that trigger warning, I've changed the slides a bit. So I, I don't think it's necessary because I don't think that feeling uncomfortable is necessarily the same as feeling triggered. Um, but I also don't want to like prescribe like what is triggering to you. But I'm just like blanket statement. Um, and I also am fully aware that I am like the impetus or like the barrier between you and your snack break. And like I like. <laughs> Snack breaks are really important. Um, and so I just want to like thank you for your patience as well as like everyone is like really amazing and cute here. Um, so kudos to all of you. Okay, so uh, today my presentation is going to be about a very specific display property in CSS. How many of you have worked with CSS and or heard of CSS? Great. Um, and I'm just kind of like, a, I'm gonna try and use a specific thing in CSS to try and describe my personal gender transition, um, and I'm going to throw a lot of information at you in the next like 10 minutes or so, both on screen and through my mouth, so um, just <laughs> strap in and follow along. Um, so again, my name is Jamie. I use they, them pronouns. If you do not know what that means, um, there's this really wonderful resource called the internet. Um, <laughs> but in summary, like if you were to talk about me, then it's like a really nice example that I like to give is like if someone is telling you, oh, my friend is coming over for pizza, and then you would ask them, oh, what kind of pizza do they like? That's all, that's really all you have to do. Um, I'm currently an engineer at Dropbox, so I work a lot with languages like Python, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, which is why I'm, I, CSS is one of my favorite languages because I think it's often sort of like, oh, uh, it's so easy to just like select something and make it red, but it's actually, there's a lot of nuance in CSS that a lot of people kind of don't, uh, get at first greeting. Um, and then I can, uh, you can find me on the internet at attention, Jamie. Uh, I would have really liked Jamie Shark. So if anyone works at a company that has like hookups to that, just let me know. <laughs> so uh, this presentation is basically going to aim to describe CSS. Uh, I'm gonna describe like just very briefly CSS to start and then my gender as I interpret it. And I know the last, the couple last presentations, they also included that shrug emoji, which will also appear in mine. <laughs> I see you. Um, and after that, we're gonna have like a side by side, compa uh, side by side comparison of how I interpret four characteristics of a CSS property called transition. <laughs> and <laughs> see where I'm going um, and how that relates to my own. So I'm hoping by the end of this, we'll have an idea of like moving away from tokenizing conversations. I'm really glad to see that a lot of people have had really thoughtful input on this topic already, so I won't really try and like reinvent the wheel here. Um, and by moving away from those conversations, we're really able to both leave space for like our individual amalgamation of identities, as well as like how to be good allies, how to be good partners, and like really show up for each other and lift each other up. Okay, so CSS. CSS, how I like to think of it when I describe it to my mom, um, it's kind of like the tablecloth on top of like the HTML table. So CSS is the thing that you use to change font size and color by selecting particular elements and then applying very specific rules to them. So this is an example of CSS. I wrote it, so I'm in fact an engineer. I'm actually not super proud of this, but you know what, whatever. Um, my gender, on the other hand, has less rules and more question marks. Um, so trans, genderqueer, gender nonconforming, non-binary are words that resonate with me, and I also feel very seen by K-pop bands and shiny black cars, dykes on bikes, squiggly lines, lots of shrugs. Um, so CSS, the transition property in CSS, uh, it's pretty straightforward, so you give four arguments to this transition function, and CSS takes these and animates how one element is gonna go from one state to another, which is usually an instantaneous transition, but in this case, like, it really gives you granular control over how you want that to happen. Um, so the example that I've given here uh, is going to change the height of an element over five seconds. Gender transitions, on the other hand, are not quite so, um, you know, it's not like you just like plug a couple things in and then poof, you have a gender transition. They're a little bit more um, uh, complicated. So oftentimes when trans people are portrayed in the media or when their experiences are just like up for discussion, the question often surrounds bodies, um, how those bodies are policed. And the point that I wanna make here is that I'm hoping that discussing more than just my physical transition or my body in general allows space to talk about like my experience as like a real person, surprise, I am one. Um, both in the tech industry as well as sort of like the world at large. 
So the first argument that you provide for a CSS transition are specific things that you want to apply to the transition. So it could be height, it could be background color, or you could apply the transition to everything about the element. Um, for me, it's not quite as simple as applying the transition. Um, and the thing that I want to note here is that it's just important to know that transitions can take place over several aspects or none and still be valid. The second argument is a duration of time. So no matter how long or how little a transition will take in any aspect, it never equates to being more or less trans or being trans enough. This is kind of a really problematic belief that like if you haven't transitioned fully, for those of you who cannot see, I'm using air quotes, um, that it, I think it's really invalidating to a lot of people who don't interpret their trans identity as something that like might look like a binary trans man that subscribes to the way that masculinity is interpreted in like the United States, just saying. Um, so really like any and all durations are valid here. The third argument that we're going to give CSS transitions is a mathematical function that sort of describes the, the trajectory at which the transition is going to take place. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but I feel like I just have to say that we don't really get exact functions in life because sometimes like shit just doesn't go according to plan. I don't know, like, and we sort of interpret like I sort of interpret this to mean that um, in terms of disclosure, you don't really get like a linear timeline. It's not as if like okay, like I'm gonna come out to my friends and I'm gonna come out to my family. After that, I might like come out to my coworkers. Like it doesn't really quite work that way, um, and. This is sort of a process that takes a lot of self-reflection. It's taking constant inventory of your own personal bandwidth, your safety. Um, and in my process, I found a lot of comfort in my support network and Choco Tacos. <laughs> Would re highly recommend. Um, the final argument is a delay of time before the transition. So in CSS, we use this to sort of like stagger certain animations. Um, and in my case, it. I was actually really grateful that like somebody sort of like gave me the space to be like, you know, like you don't have to come out as trans at a certain time. Um, because for me, like I didn't really feel like I had any sort of models that resonated with me in terms of like having somebody who was not white or trans, but like not, uh, like trans and non-binary. Um, so the ways that like I hadn't come to terms with like other aspects of my identity because like I, um, to me, the way that I interpret gender and race, um, Gender is by default racialized, and so like some, maybe like my white trans man friend, the way that he interprets masculinity is not gonna be the same as mine. And so that internally means to me like, oh, I must not be trans then, which is problematic in some ways, because then it's like you can't be authentic, and that really sucks for everybody. Um, and so the ways that I hadn't really come to terms with that like wouldn't have allowed me to be authentic in terms of how I approached gender. So in the end, um, CSS transitions are actually not so different from my own. They are both multifaceted, they're both contingent on various functions of time, and they're a lot more nuanced than you might expect. And as nuanced as CSS can be, gender is even more so. Gender is really hard, and I care about it all the time. And I really, really appreciate it when you say like, oh, but you're so awesome, I don't see gender. Like, I'm sure you've heard that phrase in like a different kind of way. So. As much as like I really appreciate you saying that, like I interact with gender every single day and every single moment, and every time I meet a stranger, it's like this like uh, I like catch my breath because it's like I'm basically like leaving it up to them to decide like what their inter interpretation of me is, and then like treat me in the way that they think is correct. Um, in addition to differences, I really like how this is being kind of like said in some many forms of ways because this is like I've only been here like a year and a half, but this is something that I'm observing a lot. Um, I want to clarify that inclusion does not necessarily mean being included. Uh, I think that this is sort of like a group of like weirdos, I say that lovingly, and introverts, and I'm sure like I have had this moment a lot, even though I'm actually really extroverted. I've had this moment where it's like I show up to a party and like everyone seems to be having a really good time, um, but I kind of like want to make a beeline to like the fuzzy animal companion in the corner because that feels safe, right? And I think that's kind of sucky that like you don't feel safe at a party because there's a difference between saying like, Hey, how are you? Oh my God, how have you been? Do you want a drink? Can I take your coat? Versus like, you are here, I see that. And then you just sort of like go on to do a different thing. Um, and there are a lot of stories that like don't end up getting heard because of that. So I think it's important to validate and affirm trans people, but more importantly, like femme, non-binary, black, and indigenous people's experiences are being erased and validated constantly. Um, they're literally like virtually non-existent in the tech space. 
um, and they're never going to be heard until we actually prioritize and address the importance of their well-being. And this is the part that everyone is like really excited about. Okay, Jamie, like I feel guilty now, so how do I take action? <laughs> <laughs> So what are some concrete ways that you can affirm trans identities? Um, respecting names and pronouns is a really great, to great place to start. Um, and yes, this is actually more important when the person is not around to witness that. Uh, and in addition, like passing should never be used as a rubric to have someone prove their identity to you. Right now, I don't know if you know, in North Carolina, there's actual legislation in place that um, prevents people from using a certain bathroom just based on like how they look. Um, and so this is actually like, this is like a real thing. Like people are like being legislated. Uh, and another thing is that like, so I've been working at Dropbox for a little bit now and I just shipped, this sort of like goes into the idea of like inclusion does not necessarily mean being included. Um, so I had this engineering fix. I just sort of like, it was similar to like, you know what? Like everyone is kind of like in their own code. So no one's really paying attention to what I'm doing, which is lucky because I, release this change that like put pronouns into our internal directory. And it's an opt-in program, or program, like it's an opt-in thing so that nobody really is forced to like list their pronouns, like just in terms of safety and also like, you know, people don't always care. And um, in terms of like the number of people that use it, like it's not a lot. And so that doesn't make me feel like included in a sense because it's like, even though like that option is there, not a lot of people like choose to like take advantage of that. And so respecting names and pronouns is also a great place to start. And also consider giving your own because even if you don't think about it, the way to normalize it and make other people feel safe is by like taking that first step. So, um, if you make a mistake, and you will, because you are human, and I see your humanity, and I think that oftentimes, like, when we make mistakes, like, we're just like, oh, God, I fucked up, like, what do I do? And it's like that sense of, like, guilt and shame, and, like, I think we've sort of covered that that isn't a productive emotion. Um, like, feel your feelings, feelings are hard, and I think that also the more important thing to do is, like, allow for your own humanity, and then, like, maybe question why you made that mistake in the first place. So if you misgender me, like, I'm the kind of person that is, like, very good at compartmentalizing, so it's like, I get that you did not mean to, it's okay, but like, actually, it's not okay. It's not my job to make you feel better about a mistake that you made. Like, I'll deal with it, and you can deal with it, and maybe, like, I would, I would want you to think about, like, what prompted you to make that misgender ring in the first place because I think that's the more important like systemic part of like why misgendering happens and like why people feel oppressed by gender and race and all of those fun things. Um, and then like even if it's too late, <laughs> it is still important to say sorry. So apologize, address the mistake, and move on. And I think that like in terms of like being good allies both as like individuals and like to a community, like it's really important that we start interpreting allyship as like a constantly evolving state. Um, one that sort of, it, like, one that involves just like constant re-education of like how we sort of like view other people's lived experiences and also just like constant presence and awareness in terms of like how we can be better in terms of like listening rather than prescribing. Um, so I would just say stay present to learn more, help communities build a reality that make them feel safe and feel included and are just like revolutionary just by existing as their authentic selves. And this is a freebie slide for you all, so if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up after. I really like sharks. Twitter, Google, I'm looking at you, so thanks.